It's July in Georgia, which is the height of the blueberry picking season. I'm going to show you how I've made blueberry mead or blueberry mellow mel. I'm starting with two quarts of freshly picked and washed blueberries. I'm going to process the blueberries in a blender in batches. I'm using about half a cup per batch of blueberry juice that I got from the farm that I picked the blueberries from. Blend the blueberries until the color becomes dark and pigmented. This means that most of the juice from the skins has been extracted. Pour the blueberry puree into a sanitized pot that holds at least 3 quarts. I'm using a stainless steel Dutch oven. Add in the juice and zest of one lemon. I prefer cutting the zest into larger pieces because it makes it easier to take the zest out later. Puree the last of the blueberries and add them to the pot. Pasteurize the puree by bringing it up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. This is necessary when using fresh fruit. I let the puree sit in the fridge until I had the rest of my ingredients together. Here I'm just adding it back to the pot to bring the temperature back up. I then added some of the blueberry juice back into the bottle that held the puree to make sure that I got every last bit of fresh blueberry out. Take a sanitized utensil and stir the juice and puree together. For this mead, I'm using star thistle honey. I liked that it was not overly sweet and had a floral, almost vanilla or strawberry essence to it. I've read that some people pick up almond notes. I think it will offer a complimentary background for the blueberries. Gently stir the honey into the juice over the lowest heat setting. For this recipe, I use two pounds total of star thistle honey. It's important to remain patient and stir everything slowly. Here I'm using a bit of blueberry juice to get the last bit of honey out of the jar. To make this a sweet mead, I'm adding an extra pound of wildflower honey. I found it was easier to use a large spoon here as opposed to the tongs I was using before. I'm adding just one quarter teaspoon of acid blend before fermentation to balance out the sweetness. Since I used so much fresh fruit, I'll also be adding pectic enzyme per the instructions on the bottle. I added an extra quarter teaspoon just to be safe. Pectic enzyme breaks down the pectin in fresh fruit purees to make the juice more available and to produce a clearer end product. I found this at my local homebrew store, but you can also find it online. Stir everything well and make sure to break up any clumps of pectic enzyme. Stirring adds in oxygen, which will be very beneficial to the yeast we're going to add later. 
it's time to transfer our wort into a two gallon bucket. This will provide enough headroom for the fermentation that will take place. When measuring my gravity, I got a reading of 1.131, which would put my potential ABV at around 16 or 17 percent. I'm also going to add yeast nutrient to this mead. I'm adding artificial nutrient instead of dates or raisins because I really want the blueberry flavor to be front and center. Though I think with adding fresh fruit, the yeast nutrient might not need to be added here, but just in case. I'm going to be using Labelin 71B yeast. It's a champagne yeast that only ferments to about 13 or 14% ABV, which will leave a good amount of residual sweetness. It also has a low pH tolerance, which is important for a fruit mead like this one that's pretty acidic. I'm finally capping off this mead and finishing it off with an airlock. It's important to fill the airlock up with either sanitizing solution or sometimes they even use clear rum or vodka. My favorite part is always labeling my brews, which is especially important when using an opaque brewing vessel like this one. I've put the date and the title and a few of the ingredients on the label, as well as the SG, starting gravity. I've also started keeping a recipe book where I keep a list of all of my ingredients and any changes I make to my brews along the way. Here you can see a collection of things that I've already been brewing for the year. And, uh, here's me! Thank you for watching!